Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Shannon and I am a homeschooling mom of eight children. And today I want to share with you the birth story of my eighth baby. He was born almost a month, almost exactly a month ago. He was a month old on Friday and today is Monday. So, um, it's been a little while and I have been able to process and kind of get back to feeling a little bit normal. But uh, I wanted to share with you his birth story today. So he was born on a Wednesday morning at 3.35. On Tuesday at about 10 o'clock that morning, I started having some contractions and they were um, a lot harder than contractions would be just starting out in labor. They were pretty strong, um, coming about every 20 minutes. And I usually had to stop what I was doing and concentrate every time that I would have one. So all day I continued to have contractions um, about every 20 minutes apart. And they stayed about the same in strength. They didn't get a whole lot worse. Um, until later that evening. At about 7 o'clock that night, I decided I was exhausted and I was going to go try to rest, um, but I kind of knew I was not going to be able to sleep at all because the contractions were strong enough that they were waking me up when I tried to nap, and so I kind of knew that I wasn't going to be able to sleep that night. Um, so I went into bed and I brushed my teeth, I got ready for bed, and then at about 8 o'clock uh, the contractions were started coming on pretty strong. So with my last baby, I had um, contractions a little bit, and then I went to bed, I was able to sleep for about an hour, then I woke up and had some more contractions, and then I went back to sleep for about an hour and then I woke up again and after the second time I woke up I was unable to go back to sleep and then she was born about three hours later. So I was expecting a similar labor this time because he's my eighth baby and I figured that my body knew what it was doing. So when I, about eight o'clock when my contractions were um, starting to get stronger, they weren't really a whole lot closer together, but they were stronger. Uh, my husband had put all the kids in bed and um, he knew that I was uh, getting closer to having a baby. So I continued to labor um, with pretty strong contractions. I was in the bathtub and out of the bathtub and just moved all over the place. Um, he was born at home, unassisted. My husband and I were there and he helped and our oldest daughter was there to help also. So after about... Um, can you be kind of not let you cry? No, she was just helping do whatever we needed her to do, to get stuff and everything. So after about three hours of laboring, my water had not broke, and I had no uh, real feeling that he had moved down a whole lot. I knew that he was already pretty low um, to start with, but um, we decided to, my husband checked me, and he could feel that the water was blocking his head a little bit, and so... I was a little concerned that maybe that was what was taking so long, why it was taking so long. Um, so when I gave a good push with a contraction, my water broke. And thankfully my water was clear, which was a praise, um, because uh, my last baby, when my water broke, it was full of meconium. So this time I was very thankful that the water was clear. And then um, after my water broke, his head just pushed down and kind of caused all nothing else to come out. It was like a little cork and it just stuck down in there and uh, blocked any more water from coming out. So I continued to um, have contractions after that. I thought that once my water broke I was excited and I just thought okay now he can just move right down and he'll be out in no time. You know I just figured it would be real quick. Uh, also, with my last babies, I did not have to push more than three times. They all, uh, the last, the last one, she came out in one push, and before that, he came out in two pushes. So, 
Uh, I, I just assumed I would have similar or faster labors than those ones. And leading up to my labor, I was, at first I was um, kind of excited. I was anxious to get it done and over with. Um, I kept trying to encourage myself by thinking I was going to have a fast labor. Um, and I kind of had it planned out in my head how I expected things to go and my birth plan and what I wanted to happen. So when we got to three hours of labor, my water was just breaking and still no baby close to being born. Um, and my, well, when my water hadn't broke, I was getting really discouraged. So finally when my water broke, um, it kind of gave me a burst of energy and a better attitude. And um, it was definitely a blessing from God that he allowed my water to break at that time because it just gave me a little bit of push and the extra um, energy and encouragement that I needed to continue to labor because by that time I was pretty exhausted. So after my water broke, I continued to labor um, and I started feeling really pushy, a lot of pressure, but I could also tell that baby was not close. Um, in my last four babies before that, as soon as I felt the urge to push, baby was right there um, coming out about as soon as I pushed. But with Clayton, I was feeling the urge to push, but nothing was happening whenever I was pushing. So it took a lot longer um, for before he was born. I pushed probably for at least two hours, and I was just getting really discouraged and really exhausted. I wanted to sleep, and I was getting frustrated, and um, my contractions were still very sporadic. They were anywhere from four minutes to ten minutes apart. So I would have a contraction and then I would get in the bathtub and uh, when I would have a nice break, I was a, at one point I fell asleep in the bathtub with my husband sitting there watching me. But um, having the, the contractions being 10 minutes apart was nice because I was able to rest a little bit more. But even up until he was born, they were not uh, anywhere really any closer than about four minutes apart. So after a couple hours of pushing and nothing happening, I was getting discouraged and tired. I had already mentioned to my husband that I thought maybe we needed to go to the hospital. There was something going on and I didn't know what it was but I knew that he should have been born by then. So um, after those couple hours of pushing I had decided I cannot do this anymore. I <laughs> And I remember laying on the bed um, Austin was listening to baby's heart rate through a contraction and uh, afterwards to make sure it recovered well. And he did great the whole time. There was no issues at all with his heart rate. Um, laying there, I was thinking in my head, I don't care if we go to the hospital and they cut me open. I just want this baby out. I can't do this anymore. And thinking that to myself, I also had the thought of, if you're saying you can't do it anymore, baby is probably almost going to be born. So I decided, um, we decided we'd go to the hospital. I got up and as he um, helped me put on my pajamas, I started having another contraction and I decided I was just gonna push with everything I had to uh, through this contraction. So I squatted down and started pushing and he came in to help and I just kept pushing and pushing as hard as I could until um, Austin reminded me that I needed to take a breath. So I took a break and I breathed a little bit, but by that point, baby's head was crowning, but the top of his head was not crowning. His little face was crowning, about like this is what my husband could see. Um, once he told me I can see his face, I realized why it had taken so long for him to come out. <laughs> he was not coming out the right way. His little face was coming first instead of the top of his head. Austin was able to help me a little bit because his head wasn't coming out the right direction. It was a lot more work for me and a lot more painful for me. Uh oh, that little middle. <laughs> Yeah, that little mister. It came out mom timey oh. Mm -hmm. He tiny right now and we had them a pop out. Mm -hmm. And um 
My name is Kala and I'm five and then I turn it up. Bye. Okay, so here he is. This little man here. <laughs> he just woke up from a nap. So he wants to be nursing. So because he was not coming out uh, top of his head first, <laughs> It was really hard for me to push him out. He just was not hardly moving at all. I was scared to quit pushing because I was afraid he would go back. I was so exhausted by then that I was just ready for him to be born. Hi. <laughs> so I continued to push and Austin kind of just swept his finger around his face like this um, to help him move down farther and faster. Um, and as I continued to push, his little head came out. And once his head came out, I quit pushing for a minute, but I still had that big urge to push. And it wasn't even a minute, it was probably like five seconds. Um, so I continued to push, and then his shoulders came out, and the rest of him came out, and I was able to sit back and um, just relax. <laughs> He's smiling at me. Um, I still was in a lot of pain and very uncomfortable because of the placenta. I had had that happen before um, with my fifth child. She was also born at home, and when my contractions started this time with him, I told my husband these feel like the contractions I had with Cadence. They were very similar feeling. Uh, different than the other ones and um, and I kind of had the same feeling with afterwards with the way the placenta was sitting I was still very uncomfortable sitting on the ground and until I was able to deliver the placenta then that finally went away so his birth was not anything like I expected he wasn't big he was seven pounds and three ounces um, my last three babies have been almost exactly the same weight and he was uh, anywhere from 20 to 21 inches long, 19 to 21 inches. Uh, we have measured it, we measured him several times and he was different every single time and when the midwife measured him he was a different length. So um, he was not a big baby. <laughs> he just had his head stuck the wrong direction and the midwife had told me, because uh, I was texting back and forth with her when my labor started and I was telling her what was going on and she said, it sounds like you need to do uh, knees, knees and chest position, which was to get on your knees and put your chest down on the ground, which could allow baby to reposition himself, um, because my contractions were so sporadic and strange, uh, she kind of thought baby was probably not in the right position, and I think, um, by that time, he was already too far into my pelvis to reposition himself, so it was just too late by then. He was, I was able to deliver him, and he was fine. He had no problems. Um, after he was born, he came out and he started crying right away, and uh, no breathing issues or anything, and he's been great since then. Um, I do notice that he tends to hold his head back like this a lot. Um, he, his, his neck muscles are still weak, so he doesn't hold his head up a lot by himself, but he can do it, but he tends to, like, when I nurse him, he'll tip his head back like this, and so I don't know if that's just something that he developed a habit of doing, and that's why he was born face first with his head like that, or what uh, the deal is, so I'm watching him carefully to see if he's going to grow out of that, and watching his neck muscles to make sure that they strengthen, but besides that, he is healthy, and He's doing great. He's smiling at us. He started smiling at us a lot earlier than my other kids. Um, he also was born with no vernix on him. He had a teeny tiny bit but right between the creases of his legs um, by his hips. But besides that, he had no vernix on him. So he was definitely ready to be born and come out. And um, I'm just thankful that he is healthy and that everything went well. I didn't tear or anything. I didn't have any excess bleeding, no issues like that, um, right after he was born. And also he 
some head like yeah, he's kind of a bobblehead, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that is my birth story. If you have questions, um, leave them in the comments below. And um, I will get to them. Thank you so much for watching today. And I will see you next time. Bye.